Hello again, this is Andrew, or Cold Run, back with Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, I am testing something different um, with audio, where I am uh, having the microphone a little bit higher up uh, on my headset. Hopefully this won't make it so that you're hearing every last nuance of my breathing. Um, but let me know if it's too quiet, or if it's nothing different, or just, I don't know, anything. Okay. So, L and R to control, L to move, R to control the camera. Got it. So how do I tell the game I got it? Do I use the waffle button? No. How do I make this go away? Was that it? No, that wasn't it. Is that telling me I have to view a codex thing? No. Oh, oh, I have to keep holding it. Or is this just I this is my quest now, like my quest is the Baker had revealed to me. As there is but one God, one life, one death, there is but one God, and he is our maker. This one. Right, so this is the church of the maker. Got a motley assortment of soldiers here. Okay, good, so that went away. Touch me with fire. That's right, because Inquisition means that these these are like religious people. All sounds pretty reasonable so far. I'm waiting for him to be like, and therefore they must be cleansed with fire. Like, everyone who disagrees with us must be cleansed with fire, but this guy doesn't seem to be on that track just yet. Oh, look at my character's uh, outfit. I love it. Okay, um, I will come back to you probably later. Uh, so. Let's take a look at what we got here. Character record is how we end. Okay. So character record is locked. I'm guessing that once I've completed quests, maybe that's a thing. I don't know. Load is load, inventory is inventory, save is save. Let's start with options. Options gameplay. Difficulty normal. Oh, so you can change the gameplay. That's good. Uh, friendly fire. Oh, I am so happy I can leave this off. Let me know if I'm, I'm not married to leaving this off. I'm not, like, wed to the idea that I have to leave this off. I'm okay with turning it on if need be, but I tend to not want to do that. But let me know if, you, if, if you've had experience with this game and you think Friendly Fire is really core to the experience and I should be leaving it on. I'm open to changing that. Um, persistent Gore. I'll leave this on for now. I think there were times in previous Dragon Age games where it could get a bit ridiculous, where you'd be in this, like, deep romance scene, or you'd be, like, in this, you know, emotional, someone would be talking about their childhood or something, and it'd just be hard to focus, because they were just drenched in, <laughs> they were just drenched in blood from, like, the ogre they just killed, and they just didn't wash it off. But I'll leave it on for now. Pause while targeting AoEs. Whether or not the game should automatically stop time when targeting area effect spell ooh I really like that anything that lets me control the game a bit more automatically I like okay good interface hide helmet helmets are always hidden during conversations I think I'll leave the helmet on then for that for now unless they get a helmet that's like I don't know a beanie with a little helicopter coming out of it I think I'll tend to leave the helmet on Hide tone icons, whether or not the tone icons in the conversation wheel should be hidden. I might adjust this later. I, I like the... I think it's hard enough to... There's a ProZD thing I'll try to remember to link in in the video here that makes me want... Like, it, that, like a video that shows how frustrating it can be when you mistake the tone when like you pick the tone is you know we don't know what the tone is and you choose like the option that's like hello and it's like hello asshole and like you know you, you I want I kind of want to know the tone that's going to come out of a particular option 
radial menu behavior. Specify if the radial, me radial menu should be displayed by either toggling or holding the corresponding button. Um, I don't, I don't really know what that means. Specify if the radial menu, so that little wheel thingy, should be displayed by either toggling or holding the corresponding button. I think it's fine as is, I guess. Um, HUD visibility, good. I don't want, I don't think I need this to be always on or always off. Contextual sounds good. Quest tracker fades when inactive, sounds good. Effects floating, I mean all this sounds fine, but it's good to know that I can come back and change it if I want. Um, yes, I didn't think I changed anything, but maybe I did. Okay, invert X and Y axis, good. I wonder if I kept that from before, because from when I played it like a year and a half ago or whatever. Camera movement speed, that's probably fine. Auto center camera, what's auto center? Whether or not the camera should cha automatically change its angle to match the incline of the ground. Um, yeah, I mean, that sounds good, I guess. I'm surprised it didn't give me a full controller map. That's kind of what I was hoping for, was that it would tell me, because um, one of the, like, three people ever watching this video, uh, Laura, you mentioned that, like, one of the buttons is the sonar thing that tells you when an item that you can access is near. Um, and I think it's, like, the L, L3 or R3, and I was hoping there'd be a full map that tells me that, but it doesn't look like it here, at least. Audio, all this is fine. Um, I'm fine with the dialogue being heavier than the others. Subtitle size, I think, is fine. Off, conversations only. Off. Yeah, I want the I want as much as possible. Display. Uh, I don't. Gamma. I'm gonna go a little bit on the brighter side. Um, I I seem to remember YouTube making it a little bit dimmer. Screen position and size. Set the visible area screen area size. I, I don't know what that means, but it's probably okay. Um, anything account wise? Yeah, that's all fine. Okay, sounds good there. Journal. What's the journal? Current quests. Collections. What's collections? I don't know. I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. Completed quests. So current quest is Cassandra wants to test the rat effects of the mark left by the blast. There's a rift nearby that may be suitable. Get to the rift with Cassandra. Good. And then last is Codex. Last but definitely not least. And again, I'm going to be trying to go through these as I go because even if I won't understand most of the story, it's nice to at least see it once. And hopefully there will be a thing that tells me when I've... Yeah, so that's it. So like the star must mean when I've... I gotta be careful though, because the star only, I don't have to like click on a thing, I just have to hover over it for the star to go away, so I can't just kind of randomly flick through this if I want to preserve how much is unread. Why was this not starred before? I don't know. Cassandra Pentagast. It's a cool last name. Lord Seeker Lucius. And, and again, I've, I've read through these codex, codices, um, last time when I when I started this game and my reactions will probably be the same I, I don't remember any of these um, I remember generally that there were some that were there were some that were letters like this one um, but I don't really remember much so again feel free to skip all this um, anyway Lord Seeker Lucius I'm fully aware of the intent behind your predecessor's declo declaration Lord Seeker Lambert pride Templars away from Chantry control and led them into an assault upon all mages, for reasons you both find justified. I, however, am uncertain when the Seekers of Truth went from when the Seekers of Truth went from guarding. Hello, cat. Went from guarding against injustice to perpetrating it. If you truly believe that is not the case, I suggest you look at a window at the chaos the war has caused, and ask yourself if Thetis will ever re will recover, even if you are victorious. I remain at Divine Justinia's right hand and will stay here even if you brand me traitor. 
I am sorry, but there is too much at stake here to swerve. Too much at stake to swerve from the path we willingly followed at the Chantry's Foundation. From a letter by Seeker Cassandra Pentagast to Lord Seeker, Lucius Corin, Dragon 939. Dragon must be the year, something, some kind of calendar system. Um, so this is to her boss. So she's got some chutzpah. Yeah, so she's not happy with the direction her bosses were taking. Um, but then there's Divine Justinia, who's like Dragon Age Pope, right? Hmm. I think she's Dragon Age Pope, and so there seems to be some kind of schism within within the... I guess they're both part... they're all part of the Chantry, right? Okay. And so just character-wise, this seems like she's like more moderate she's not very she she's moderate in terms of not in, in terms of factoring in uh, human costs rather than just principles above all else all right divine Justinia the fifth formerly the revered mother Dorothea of Orlay divine Justinia the fifth rose to power after the death of divine Beatrix the third in the year 934 of the Dragon Age so this letter was from 939, so I'm guessing that's five years later. Maybe. So probably Age of the Dragon rather than... Oh, Dragon Age. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, so Age of the Dragon, not, not necessarily the year. I wonder what the other ages were. Little is known of Dorothea's background before she joined the Chantry as an initiate, but she proved to be a liberal and daring thinker. Right, so that seems closer to... Um, seems closer to Cassandra's line of thinking than to the Lord Seekers. She proved to be a liberal and daring thinker, willing to take a former bard and lay sister Leliana as a close advisor. Um, a headstrong devotion. It, it's, it's tough for me to not ship Leliana with literally everyone, so I'm going to refrain from that now, though. A uh, headstrong devotion to her own agenda and rumored support of the Mage Rebellion earned her no small dislike from the powerful priests long used controlling access to the Divine. In the year 940 of the Dragon Age, Divine Justinia called a summit, intending to negotiate a truce between the Mage Rebellion and the Templars splintered from the Chantry. So the Templars in the... in Dragon Age 2 were not part of the chan The Templars who were like trying to put down the, chan the Mage Rebellion were going against Divine Justinia. And... And so they were not necessarily. Fo they were kind of operating independently from the Chantry, even though they probably believed they were following the following the the Maker's will. Okay. The divine, divine conclave was held at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, most holy, the most holy place in Thetis. Before a resolution could be reached, a cataclysmic explosion destroyed the conclave, consumed the temple, rent the sky, and shattered the world's hopes for peace. Divine Justinia the Fifth perished in the Temple of Sacred Ashes. So maybe this, I guess here's a question, is, did that all happen in Dragon, I feel like that didn't happen in Dragon Age 2, I feel like this is just giving new history. Divine Justinia V perished in the Temple of Sacred Ashes, the Chantry flounders leaderless in the wake of her death, and its fate grows increasingly uncertain. If order is not restored to Thetis, Justinia V might be remembered as the Chantry's final divine. Okay. Deer. Lavalon. Lavellon. I'll go with Lavellon. Lavellon of the Dalish. The Dalish are elves who refuse to live in human cities where their people are exploited, having few rights. They choose to eke out an independent existence in the forest, attempting to keep the last remnants of their ancient culture alive. Alana is from Clan Lavellon, a group of Dalish who migrate around the perpetually feuding free marches. Okay, so we're nomads on free marches. Uh, Alana's people travel along the borders of each city-state's territory, where free march rulers will be less inclined to attack them for fear of accidentally provoking neighboring cities. Perpetually free marches, travel on the borders. Okay, so we're kind of playing... Okay, so we're being a little bit cagey in how we move there. Alana, and it also sounds like we're not really necessarily welcomed by any of them, they're just, 
we're just like right in front of the enemy so we don't want them they don't want to like mistakenly either I guess miss us and kill some farmer from the other areas or maybe they don't know how accepting each other are of us Alara, Alana became a hunter at a young age going into a respected protector and provider the recent mage rebellions disturbed her clan's way of life as the fighting spilled out into the countryside Clan Lavellian's leader, Keeper Dashana Istamethorial Lavellan. Istamethorial. Yeah, that sounds right. Istamethorial Lavellan chose Alana to spy on the meeting at the Temple of Sacred Ashes between the Divine and Feuding factions so she could bring back news of the outcome. After the explosion that killed the Divine, Alana was the only survivor. Rumors that the mysterious mark in her hand as a sign of the Maker's favor were spread by those who claimed they saw the Divine Prophet Andraste herself lead Lavellan out of the Fade. So, the thing that just immediately jumps out at me is was that, is that people would probably interpret um, that person uh, reaching out to us as Andraste herself. The, the kind of ghostly thing with the large hat. Right. So that's how they. Saw. So other people saw that. It was a sign that the Maker's favor was spread by those who claim they saw the Divine Prophet and Drasta herself lead Lavellan out of the Fade. No, that, I'm sorry, the Lavellan is there's that person. I, I, I have to read this again. Rumors that the mysterious mark on her hand, on Elana's hand, is a sign. Rumors that the mysterious mark on Elana's hand is a sign. The mark is a sign of the Maker's favor, or spread by those who claim they saw. Wait, so am I Lavellan too? Oh yeah, okay, Lavellan in this case is referring to me, not to the, um, not to the Keeper. So the Keeper is Deshana Istamethorial Lavellan, and I am Elana Lavellan. So they're going to be referring to me as Lavellan, I guess, too. Okay, I sort of get that. So why was I sent to spy then? I guess I was sent to spy because... Just because it was messing... Okay, just because it was messing with the major balance, were messing with the clan's way of life, and we were just trying to understand the political landscape a bit better. Okay, crafting materials, creatures, groups. The Dalish Elves. In time, the human empires will crumble. We have seen it happen countless times. Until then, we wait. We keep to the wild borderlands and we raise Hala. Hala are like the wolves or something, or the deer maybe? Something like that. We raise Hala and build Aravels and present a moving target to the humans around us. We try to keep hold of the old ways to relearn what was forgotten, right? So these these are trying to kind of get back to their roots rather than like it's not like they they kept a continuous tradition going. They're trying to rediscover that. And so because of that, just I'm, I'm again trying to think of how my character will be personality wise. Probably more defensive um, to anyone outside, um, mistrustful of non Dalish. Um, and not wanting to betray anything. We call to the ancient gods, although they do not answer, and have not heard us since before the fall of Arlathan, so that one day they might remember us. Elgarnon, the eldest of the son, and he who overthrew his father, Mithil the protector, Finharel, the dread wolf, Andruil the huntress, Falundin, the friend of the dead, and Durthamen, the keeper of secrets. Gilanain, the mother of Hala, June, the master of craft, and so lies the hearth keeper. So, again, my I think my character will probably be very, um, will look with a very skeptical, mistrustful eye at the Church of Andraste, too, and at people related with it. Um, because it sounds like they, they might feel that that religion was kind of forced on them, and this is their true religion. I swear it by the old gods anew. Alright, we gather every ten years for the Arlothven. 
to retell the ancient stories and keep them alive, for when the human kingdoms are gone, we must be ready to teach the others what it means to be elves. Yeah, so there's sort of like a survivalist mentality. They think everything else is doomed, and rightfully so, and they want to be ready, ready when everyone comes scrambling to their bunkers, looking for canned meats that they've stocked up. As told by Gisharel, keeper of the Rolofarin clan of the Dalish elves. Interesting. What's that icon? It's like a twin... Thinking of the, the Order of the Twin Adder from Final Fantasy XIV with Gridania and their elves. Um, so twin dragons, twin serpents, something. History. And again, there's no... Oh, there's the star. And now the star's gone. Got it. Okay. The Conclave. It has been a year of little more than chaos. Yes, the mages voted to dissolve the Circle of Magi. I remember the Circle of Magi as that really fun intro area in um, in Dragon Age Origins, and that area, and that really trippy area where you came back to it later and had to go into, like, Dreamland. Um, okay, yes, the, the mages voted to dissolve the Circle of Magi, Magi, but I will point out this vote came only after increased restrictions were placed on them following the unfortunate events in Kirkwall. Kirkwall, that's the name of the place from Dragon Age 2. What other choice did they have? The, yes, the Templar Order abandoned their duties and elected to pursue the mages to bring them back in line, but after a thousand years in which their sole role was the mages' keeper, what else could they expect? They envisioned the war over quickly, a single battle that would see the mages' resolve soon crumble after which they would meekly return to confinement. That did not happen. This conflict could drag on forever, with advantage on neither side. Both Templars and Majors see this, and thus they have agreed to come to the Conclave. Okay, so the Conclave, again, the Conclave is not the thing from the end of Dragon Age 2. The Conclave is... like the thing afterwards. Yeah, from this is the thing where Divine Justinia was killed. And where I was the only survivor, I guess. This is our chance. Words need to be said which have not been said. A compromise must be reached because there is no other choice. I believe this with all my heart. I am not without fault in all this. Perhaps I pushed too hard for reform or not hard enough. The Maker has seen fit to give me another chance. I will not squander it. The Temple of Sacred Ashes is where together we will make history, and with luck we will be remembered kindly for it. organization as massive as the Inquisition is a way of piling up paper. Letters and notes may be included. May include clues or essential information. They may be worth reading and what little downtime can be sacrificed. I'm good at very few things in this world, but sacrificing downtime is one of them. The Breach! Okay, this is from Magic. Wait, what's the Magic generally? Across... I haven't been... I guess I haven't been checking those out. Um... Colorful characters. Weird creatures. Some are harmless. It's important to be able to tell the difference. Um, yeah, that picture is, looks like that guy. Maybe he forgot that dragons aren't harmless. I don't know. Um, groups. Oh, so that's just a general group. I don't know. The organizations of people said this are numerous and often draw hard lines to stand behind. Only fools ignore the history of the ground they walk and the people they meet. Ooh, look at that death with a crown. Magic is across much of Thetis. Magic is a power that is feared or reviled, but is often proves useful. The more magic is studied, the better off the people wielding or running from it. Right, because... And it's not... If I'm remembering right, it's not like mindlessly reviled like it's like magic seems to I'm trying to think of the Welsh girl the Welsh um, person from Dragon Age 2 who was like yeah blood magic's fine and in the end she got like possessed by a thing um, like magic does often like open you up to demons and so it seems not unreasonable that people would be freaked out a little by it the breach so this is like a hand show image. Ooh, that's how you do it. Okay. That's really cool. So it's a hand, someone not looking at what they're reaching into. What does it mean to pierce the veil, that which separates our world from the realm of demon, dreams and demons? 
for the average man and woman is a frightening thought to consider just how fragile the separation actually is. The veil is not a physical curtain, not a structure limited to a particular place. It is everywhere. It is in their home, in their streets, in the streets where they walk, in the farmers' fields as well as remote mountain veils. At any moment, it could be torn to shreds, allowing demons and other horrors to flood into our world like water through a burst dam. No one in lore tells us that small rifts can be sealed, but what about a large one? What if some catastrophic magical event created a rift so large and horrific it weakened the integrity of the veil as a whole? Such a breach would threaten the into our entire world, turning concerns about occasional demonic intrusion into a charming anecdote compared to the monsters we would then face. If there's anything to be done, any reason we should look at magic with fear, it is for the possibility more than for that possibility more than any other. So using magic like weakens the veil, I'm guessing. From the truth threat of magic by Lady Seeker Alondra Vale. Huh, Vale. Maps, not all treasures stumbled upon. Sometimes there's a map. Ooh, treasure maps. Maybe we get some chocobo hot and cold going here. Um, nations and regions, cities and villages, landmarks and empty expanses, many places in Thetis to call home. Stories and songs are windows into the minds of the people. And tutorials. Inquisition has to start somewhere. Um, sound effects. Okay. Um, oof. Some of these, I imagine, will be pretty straightforward, pretty obvious. Party members and enemies can be affected by or innately possess a range of status effects. So innately possess, I guess, would mean if you just, like, for burning, for instance. No, not for burning. I don't know. Like, I guess if if you just are like that and you can't, it can't be dispelled. Um, list below provides a brief synopsis of general terms. Disabled include frozen, paralyzed, stunned, and asleep target cannot move or take any action. This effect usually has a limited duration or an action that ends it. Taking damage causes a sleeping target to wake up. You can hit disabled targets with abilities marked as detonators to cause devastating combo effects. Okay, good. So sometimes it's a benefit. But I wonder if there's no friendly fire. Um, if, like, my buddy is asleep, if, if uh, Cassandra is asleep, can I still bop her on the head? Or is that, does that count as friendly fire to wake her up? There's probably better ways to wake her up than bopping her. Taking damage over time, including burning, poison, bleeding. The target takes ongoing damage of a given type over a period of time. Makes sense. Chill. The target moves slowly and attacks more slowly. Confused. The target will attack its own allies. Man, screw that one. I hate that that attack, that uh, status effect in pretty much any game. Um. I know in Final Fantasy, if an, if an ally is confused, you can usually, again, you can bop it, and then it'll wake up. Um, I don't know if that's the same here. Knockdown. Target lies prone on the ground and will require a few moments to get back on its feet. Panic. The target stops attacking and moves randomly around the battlefield. Taking damage ends the effect. Shocked. The target's magical resistant. This is, sorry, this is, panic is an interesting one. Um, so it's not... You're not attacking anyone else, and you're not paralyzed. So I guess that can be even worse than paralysis if there's, like, dangerous fire around the field and you're just randomly charging into it. I guess as soon as you hit the fire, you would no longer be par panicked, though. Uh, the target's a shock. The target's magical resistance is reduced. Interesting. It'll take bonus damage from mag magical attacks. So this is, like, D-Shell. Shocked is, like, D-Shell. Slow. The target moves more slowly. So, chill, the target moves and attacks more slowly, so slow just slows the slow, the slow, slow. Slow just moves the, makes the target move more slowly, but it, its attacks are normal. Swarm, the target is covered in bees, holy crap! Thetis is the worst place ever. Um, the target is covered in bees, it takes ongoing damage and has a chance to become panicked as the result of the stinging, yeah. Um, Again, I'm comparing it to other... other th Wait, did they mix... May, say Swarmed was an example of taking damage over time? Includes burning, poison, bleeding, but not... Probably not entirely include. So this probably is a damage over time that also does panic. Um, 
Yeah. Oh my god, that's horrible. Uh, Sundered. The target's armor is reduced. It will take bonus damage from physical attacks. Okay, deep protect. Taunted. The target preferentially attacks the character who used the taunting ability to the exclusion of all others, moving to engage them if necessary. That's something that my character as Sword and Shielder will use, probably. Weakened. The target's attacks do less damage. Makes sense. Vulnerable type. Bonus damage from... Ooh, Spirit is a damage type. Interesting. Beneficial effects. Barrier. Magical bar effect that protects the target from damage. I'm guessing magical and physical. Incoming attacks must deplete the barrier. Oh, no. It must deplete the barrier before the target loses health. So this is like a shield. This is like a flat-out damage shield. Some, rather than the percentage reduction. Some abilities, spells, and weapons do bonus damage against the target's barrier. So if an enemy has... If you're going to do... Uh, how I interpret this, I guess, is if an enemy has a frost shield up and you do bonus damage against frost, then if you were doing... Then you'd... If you were doing a 100 damage attack and you do bonus against, a fro against frost, then you'd be doing 150 damage to that shield. And then once the shield is depleted, the frost shield is depleted, you'd be doing 100 damage to the, to the base target. Something like that. Guard. A type of combat training that protects the... T I guess the main takeaway from barrier is to watch what kind of barrier it is and adapt accordingly. Guard. A type of combat training that protects the target from damage. Incoming attacks must deplete the guard before the target loses health. How is that any different? Some spells, abilities... Oh, Barrier is the magic version. Guard is the physical version. Guard protecting against physical damage. Okay. Some ability spells and weapons do bonus damage against the target's guard. Target with an active guard resists being staggered or knocked down. Resistance type. Will they take less damage from it? Greater resistance type. This target takes little or no damage. And then immunity. Um... So none of them, again, Final Fantasy is my main comparison point here, but in that game, you could get to a point where you're actually healed by the thing. Um, it doesn't sound like that's the case here. It goes from either you take less damage, you take lot, very, very less damage, or you're immune. And to one more debilitating effects. Oh, we know, oh, so this is different. Resistance to a type of damage, greater resistance to a type of damage, that's as far as it goes. Greater resistance could mean immune from a damage type, and then immunity is just from the effect. Okay. Good. Now, it's already been like a while, like a half hour, and so I'm gonna try to get past that door before I call it. So let me push some buttons here. Say X is jump. Okay, this is the so L3 is the sonar. Searching reveals nearby loot, codex entries, and crafting nodes. So, is it... I guess here's my question. Is, is it required? Um, is this an invisible wall? Oh, nope. It's not an invisible wall. It's death. <laughs> um, if you leave, oh, I should have read that. I, so is that now a codex? A tutorial on death? No. Is there any way? Is there any place to see those old messages? Okay, but it basically, it basically says you you return somewhere. I didn't see where you returned to. So I'm going to test something out. If I jump off there, will I return back to the beginning, or will I return Open from where I jumped gate. off of? We are heading into the valley. I return from where I jumped off of. The eye in your. X is the quest mark map from the hero menu. Quest oh quest map is the is in the middle. And so I can see areas I haven't unlocked. Um L2 R2 is zoom. L3 is legend. Oh legend, okay. Let's see. Anything interesting? Unclaimed camp and unclaimed keep. I don't know what the, I don't know what a lot of these are. Phaedrif, Astrarium. Fast travel. 
ocularium, ocularum, astrarium, and ocularum. Operation. Okay, this is an expansive game, isn't it? So you're praying. You got a bunch of bodies here. So that seems to be like the the churching gear. This seems to be like the Inquisition chantry gear, whatever it is. And he has those like the things on his top of his chest are like those rays of sunlight. Are those the same thing that um Yeah, or they're like the rays from the eye, something like that. So we got some bodies lined up. This one's taken an account. Or this yeah, this she's taken an account. She's like marking down stuff about the bodies. Um What's that written on there? I guess that's like a toe tag, the equivalent of a toe tag. Some identifying thing. And we got this guy who's took an arrow to the elbow. And yeah, people here are not doing great in this camp. This camp is not a happy place to be. There's a lot of death and injury. So they open the gates. Can I go inside here? I cannot. Um yeah, so congratulations, we made it out the door. And with that, I'm going to call it for this session. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you later.